Hi everyone, in this recording we're looking at how to create uh, a dynamic leg with two-point constraints. Um, so right here over on the right side I have my front leg which is this one um, and we are going to change things up a bit. So constraints have a tendency to work in a way uh, that kind of breaks the conventions of what we're used to doing in rigging. For instance right here I have a typical hierarchy where the foot connects into the leg which connects into the thigh allowing me to rotate each one right here to create my hierarchy. But um, one of the issues with this method is that we, um, we have trouble keeping the foot grounded if we want to be able to animate it and have kind of char the character just shifting uh, his or her weight a little bit. And that has always been something that's been a little more challenging in terms of um, what we can do to, um, to achieve that in the animation process. So in order to, uh, to set up the constraints, we're just gonna change things up a bit and disconnect all of these right here. If ever we need to access them again, we'll just grab those and, uh, and use them because I've already set my pivot points on these pegs right here. So I'll keep them just in case I need them. And again, we'll just follow up with the previous exercise and set up a two point constraint using uh, the leg right here. So I'm going to bring in a first one right here and this peg right here already has the pivot point at the knee. So for the two point constraint we remember we need two pegs right here. So I could use that as one of my main pegs. So I can slide that in using alt right here. It doesn't matter which port it is connected in. We can always change that. Um, so I can connect the leg to my right port here and in order for it to work right now if I try moving it it's just going to move it like a regular peg because I only have one connected in so I need the other one to actually come and balance things out so usually at the two extremities of my shape and I could use one at the ankle right here and lucky me I've already got the um, the peg for the foot that has the pivot point in the right place so I can actually use that one to also bring in a connection to my two point constraint. Now you can't bring it in from the top, right? You need to bring it in from the bottom to the top of the two point constraint. That's how it's always going to work. The peg needs to be connected at the top. So I'm going to connect that one, hook it up to my two point constraint, which is attached to the leg. So now, same as with the exercise that we did with the hair, if I click at the top, I've got the possibility of changing by moving right here, the upper part of my leg. And if I click at the bottom, it's going to select this one right here and my foot is attached to it because right now, my two point constraint attaches to the foot master, which is also attached to the rest of the foot. So we've already got one set up right here. Right now, if we look at the thigh, we could do the same thing over here. This pivot point right here is already at the upper portion of my leg and I could want another one over in the middle. So let's start by bringing another two point constraint. Let's connect it in between again holding alt and so we've got our first pivot point connected right here which is at the top i want to have one at the bottom right here i could of course create a new pivot point but then i already have one here which is connected to this one so we're kind of building the hierarchy in a different way here and i can grab the port hook that up into my left peg port. And now, same as with the lower leg, I click on this, I can use that to move things around a bit. If I click on the bottom portion of the thigh, then I can use a little knee right here. So that allows me to 
bend the knee a little bit, just like so, and be able to, uh, to move things around and then adjust if need be by pulling down the rest. So you need to kind of use both pegs if you want it to look nice. It's not gonna be just this automatic thing where you can, uh, you can just stretch and squash and not break anything, but by using both pegs, you're able to really get a nice smooth movement to it and always keeping the foot grounded right here. All right, so from here, we can take it a notch further because right now we can bend the knee, we can move things around, but if I wanna move the foot, it's pretty much not attached to a whole lot of thing and I can't really move the thigh with it. So I'm gonna bring in a third two-point constraints and you'll see where we go from there. So we have the thigh right here. I actually want something that's gonna join up the foot and the upper portion of the thigh. So now if I want, I can actually bring that up here and instead of connecting through the right part, I'm gonna connect the other two point constraint instead and connect the thigh over here instead. So that connection is gonna pass through onto the other port right here and we're joining up the thigh and we wanna join up the pivot point over here in the foot and have kind of everything joined together at the same time. So I'm gonna bring that over here. And of course, I wanna make sure that the leg actually follows something. So we'll connect it over here. Let's reset our connections right here just to make sure that we have everything in its original position. So now if I grab this peg and I move it, I get to do the entire thing over at the same time because I'm linking this point and this point right here at the bottom at the ankle. If I grab the foot, I can slide that over and have the foot staying grounded right here. I could move it up over here, then click, let's say on the ankle, fold the knee a little bit and just keep going like that to adjust a few things here and there. And now I have the leg that's staying grounded. So right now I have the leg staying grounded right here. It's not gonna move unless I move other parts of the character. If I interpolate that, we can even try it right here. I'm gonna do my my keyframes over here. Let's set a keyframe down on all of these and let's just fold the knee a little bit to bring it back in. I'm gonna go and find the peg that I've created right here. And see the foot is not moving at all. So we can adjust, of course, these little things uh, like the knee sticking out. This is normal. This is because it's stretching from uh, the point that we have there. One other option that we have is we could also go and edit the, uh, the constraints that we have right here, edit the, uh, the numbers that we have right here, the same ones that we modified inside the hair. If we don't want it to stretch too much, if we don't want the volume to change too much, this is all where we would go and do it. Um, we can, of course, also use, um, I conveniently enough had um, some deformation on some of these right here. So I could use those as well if I've used some, uh, some envelopes to just go and slightly readjust some of the shapes. That would work as well. I can just go over here and reposition my items uh, in the way that I want and simply enough animate those afterwards to make sure that uh, the animation is going to be as smooth as possible. Um, so if you were to ask me how, um, how this method makes it any better than the other one, I think if you have characters that you're gonna need to, um, to animate very often, 
using uh, the grounded feet and have little shifts in the weight of the character and have them lean against stuff. Um, this is definitely something that's going to be useful for some things like the legs. I wouldn't necessarily include it inside of the arms because the arms don't necessarily very often need to be grounded unless we're talking about, um, about quadrupedes. Um, I would probably leave it with the usual hierarchy that we have um, just like so, but um, definitely for the legs, I think it's a, it's a big um, improvement to be able to uh, have the leg grounded or just move it up whenever you want to, uh, to be able to change certain shapes such as this. So I hope that was useful. We're gonna keep going in just a sec with the rest of the constraints. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.